Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today, well, last week we told you it was the final Warlock Wednesday, but uh, it turns out we lied. We're going to squeeze one more Warlock Wednesday out of this uh, out of this channel, and uh, here it is. We're, we're, today we're going to uh, rank all the Eldritch Invocations. Yay. Huzzah. This is exciting. This is a comprehensive, like, we haven't, like, put them all together in one spot before. I'm personally really interested to see how many of these get into F tier. So. Yeah. um, Yeah, we got a lot of them to do. So without further ado, here come the rankings. Buckle up. And we're back. All right, you ready to jump into it? Absolutely. All right, I think I've alphabetized all these correctly. Uh, so let's start with the first one Agonizing Blast. Oh, Agonizing Blast. I mean, like, it is sort of the crux around the blaster character, right? Because otherwise, you just have a multi attacking firebolt, which isn't still that bad but like you really want the plus five damage it's like almost doubling the damage of your elders blasts that yes. probably runs at a solid a tier right ah uh, we're not going full s i, I mean uh, i'll put it in a but i think like i don't know even if you're not committed to full blaster you're gonna i, I can't think of many i mean i guess you could think of warlocks that don't care about this so much many but uh in fact. yeah they yeah. i mean like it it is a central pillar. If you are a blaster, you do want this on your sheet. Um, I think there are enough characters that don't want it that I don't think it needs to be an S. Like, I don't all think right. every single character considers this. Fair enough. Um, all right. Well, Armor of Shadows. D? D <laughs> right? This is a... Uh, mage Armor at Will. Mage Armor at Will. And I think we give a D because it's Q with Abjurer. And that's like actually it. Because most of the time you'll just use medium armor because you're a warlock and you can right, do that. Exactly. Um, you don't want the marginal AC one for an invocation. That that de that's not a good deal. It being an abjuration spell though gives you infinite refreshes for your your arcane wards if you're doing some cheesy things with the forcer subclasses. So you know that's fun. Yeah, for uh, for that specific build to be higher, but across the board, I don't put a lot of value in armor of shadows. Yeah, I don't. Which think... is unfortunate because it's got the the words I love. At will. Oh yeah, that's that's the only that those words alone have pulled that out of F tier, right? Because like because that you can do it at will with something else that exists in this game, you can do some interesting stuff. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, mage armor at will. I mean, it's an eight hour long spell, so that's not as exciting yep. without any munchkin stuff. All right, ascendant step. I like ascendant step. It's levitate at will, but it's ninth level prereq, and the ninth level prereq is like pretty hefty. It's, it's this so is, uh, cool. levitate. Yeah. Again, this is at will, right? Yes. But no conditions level. around it. The, again, the only barrier that keeps me from ranking this really highly is it the ninth level project was it is so late. Yes. I mean, just depending on uh, you know what your subclass is, you might be able to fly by then anyway. I mean, that, that might come a little bit later for like genie locks and stuff. I think it's thirteen. And flight isn't always given, and this is definitely worse than regular flight, though. But it's also yeah. more fun, and it only targets yourself. Let's. I think this is a fine little B. I don't think it's quite like generic. I think like C would deserve. I think this is slightly better. And at will levitate, I do think can be pretty awesome, pretty fun. The only consideration again is how late you get it. Did you say B? Yeah, I think so. All right. I think it's fine. We got six tiers. This is, I would say, slightly above average. I don't know. I mean, ninth level. That's all right. Fine. Bump down to C. Fine. That's fair. Uh, ninth level all is right, late. all right. Ooh, I influenced. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up is aspect of the moon. Uh, so this like only matters if you are doing cheesy munchkin BS, but like to the extreme, this is only on the coffee locks that are deliberately trying to break the game in half, and their DM tried to curtail them by saying, "Oh, but the exhaustion rules added in." You know, Tasha said you need to sleep, and then you go. Screw you, I took this invocation so I can continue to break the rules. Break what exactly the rules. does it do? You don't need to sleep. That's it. That's it. 
You still need a long rest, uh, but you can now keep watch instead of sleeping while you long rest. So right. uh, yeah, I, mean, I guess you can do other things too. Just like, so, uh, it's light activity is what it limits it to. Yeah. But like, you could you there's not much to do with light activity. You, like you can't. I don't think you can make spell scrolls during that time. I think most like magic element crafting requires intensive activity, oh. which means this like uh you can whittle, but it can't be good. So <laughs> I think this probably should be D tier. It yeah, it sounds about right. The same role as like you know, there's one build that can do some cute things with it, uh, and most characters want to be nowhere near it. Yeah, like literally the coffee lock stuff is the only reason it's out of F tier, and I don't even think that's that compelling a reason. Yeah, otherwise it's pretty much just ribbon. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, beast speech. Speak with animals at will. I love this thing, but it is not great. I think this is much more deserving of the beast slot compared to ascendant step. Okay, I do I'll, think... I'll agree with that because you know, beast speech. I mean, you can you can always fi reliably find beasts to speak with, and uh, this doesn't have a prerequisite level. Nope, you can just get out of the gate yeah. if you really want to. Yeah. There's, there are things you can do talking to beasts. Absolutely. All right. Be it is. I, yeah, I think if you haven't played with animals before, do it. It's a really good time, and I guarantee you in 95 plus percent of campaigns, you will have no problem finding rodents, cockroaches, birds, people that, animals that can be useful by their nature of just existing in space around you, and Beast Speech gives you a way to talk to them. It's pretty sweet. You'll never be lonely. You will never be lonely. This is true. Ah, <laughs> and while you're not lonely, you can use bewitching whispers. Oh, you skipped one. We got beguiling influence next. Oh, the alphabetical right, Bob. Yeah. What comes first, G or W? I'm, I'm only a writer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so this is beguiling influence. What we're referencing here. Uh, this is old proficiency in deception and persuasion. Uh, I don't know if we're supposed to give this an F or not, but I think we probably should because I don't think anyone should ever take this. All right, I would have argued with you before we did the video on this. I remember that there's a, yeah, there, are a lot of different skills you can use to achieve the same effect, and uh, yeah, this is just yeah. So I think what this core comes down to, and I think we're going to see that a lot with these invocations. Invocations are a really large part of your power budget as far as how you as a character influence the world and how you contribute to both com in and out of combat, right? Where full casters use their first level and second level and third level spell slots, you get instead at will unique abilities. Bonus skills isn't close to at will unique abilities like a charm person would be or just like having extra first level spell slots, having extra cantrips even. This is the equivalent of like being getting like an eighth of a level in rogue for their bonus skills and you 95 percent of the time don't need these because you have a already one in persuasion or one in deception or one in intimidation like you just need one of these skills on your sheet which you already wanted to have anyway and that just makes this a thing that i i really don't think anyone ever wants i don't think you should ever put the inputs on your sheet i think we might get some differences of opinion in the comments but uh, then i'm with you d fine d is fine oh. it gives you something technically and we'll have no shortage of f's oh yeah that's true we got we, we gotta leave some room for the f's okay there are worse things than beguiling influence such as uh, bewitching whispers yeah this one is the first of many that we're gonna get to stick right into f tier because it says you can cast compulsion once using a warlock spell slot no thanks hard pass that's worse than learning a spell uh you can do it once per long rest uh, you get the privilege of casting a spell using your warlock spell slots. Uh, it doesn't matter what spell Just is. to be clear, all right, this is once here. per long rest. So when you take a short rest, you do get your slots back, but yes. you can't use this. You can't use that slot again on compulsion until your next right. long rest. Okay. Right. Which is so dumb. Again, it's worse than learning a spell. These things are horrendous. That's It's just so nuts. I mean, it's they so have... We, they have at will invocations here. There's, they sure do. Plenty of them. And 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 you know, just you can use it once for free. Yep. That's that's something better. Uh agreed. Um I mean compulsion is a fun ability for bards, but where you like get everyone to do the cha cha slide and they have to obey you. It's not a powerful spell by any stretch of the imagination. Uh and it certainly isn't powerful enough to justify this. Like I don't think you should be casting compulsion on a warlock with your warlock spell slots, even if you were to learn it normally. And I hmm. certainly don't think you should take an invocation for it. Agreed. Moving on. Bond of the Talisman. All right, so Bond is the teleporty one. And yes. 
sticking this on your familiar is really fun. Sticking this on allies is really fun. I think this is the only compelling reason to be a talisman warlock, right? Um, it's certainly the most fun of the uh, tal of of the talisman invocations. Mm -hmm. But um, still, we had the video, and I I did my best, and I couldn't think of a whole lot of reasons to uh, justify being a talisman warlock. <laughs> Yeah, 12 levels is so long, and you're forgoing real powerful features. Like you, I was thinking, oh, I'll have my infamiliar. Oh, wait, I can't have an infamiliar because I can't take Pact of the Chain because I have Pact of the Talisman. So I have to have, like, I already had a find ritual casting that I couldn't get through Book of Ancient Secrets because, again, that requires the specific Pact Boon that I don't have because I took Talisman. So, like, my ability to get a familiar to even use with this thing is incredibly challenging out right unless I'm spending feats on it. And then you're like, okay, so I have to do this whole big jump through 200 million hoops to get a four times per long rest teleport. Uh, let's. I think this is the best of them, and again, kind of the only reason to do it. So let's put it in C. Like, if you, mm -hmm. if you were to commit all the way to it, I do think it'll be fine. But, like, it's just really a shame that it's stable to... Like, this mid feature is stable to a whole lot of other trash. Yeah. Book of Ancient Secrets. I love this thing. I truly think this is one of the best. Ah, okay. I think if we're going to put an Agonizing Blast in A tier, we probably should bump. Okay. I, all right. But thinking <laughs> about this, Agonizing Blast probably deserves to be an S tier because it is built defining. I agree that I also think Book of Ancient Secrets is built defining. Um, okay. Right. I would I also think this that. should be an S tier. I really do think like a lot of Tome Locks will get to do cool, powerful things, and it comes down to gaining ritual casting in this kind of a powerful format. Yep. This is like, this will mix a bunch of other invocations into one. So you can get like the tech magic with this, speak with animals with this if you want to. You can do a lot of the other warlock utility stuff by getting them this way. The fact that you can add ritual spells to the Book of Shadows with this is great. It means you're going to like actually keep adding more and more and growing as your character does as you accrue all these cool, random, eclectic uh, ritual spells. It's really powerful. And the floor is you get a familiar and, you know, put find familiar yeah. in this book, get your extra awesome utility companion that's incredibly impactful. It's it's fantastic. This is, I and, think, the big reason to play Pack of the Tome. And you you don't feel nearly as limited by a pack magic. Oh, yeah. Because you've got a wealth of new spells that you can ritual cast. And you can keep growing. That's so great. Love it. Mm -hmm. Chains of Carceri. I love this thing. I'm gonna give, I forgot what it does. It's hold monster for celestial fiends and elementals at will. Wow. Yeah, but it's it's 15th level pack of the chain prerequisite, so you do need to be a chain walk and you need to be deep into it. Um, but hold monster at will for fiends, celestials, and fiends, like and oh, sorry, celestials, fiends, and elementals. It is fairly narrow. It is genuinely powerful when it does crop up, though. So I'm like, B tier. This seems powerful, right? Yeah, it's powerful, and um, it by the time you're at fifteenth level, it, it's gonna come into play every, you know, more often than it would before. So, yeah, I, like at minimum, I would expect high matter settings to have conjure elemental companions and summon creatures that you honestly won't hate. Just being like, oh, I guess for free, I'll hold the giant raging hundred and thirty hit point fire elemental, right? Yeah, I mean, when it works, it's uh, it's a big one. Oh, yeah, it's debilitating. And it definitely helps make up for the fact, like, in the upper tiers, you are limited on your spell slots. You will not feel bad spending actions casting this. No. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> limited or not, when you get the opportunity to cast this, you won't feel bad using it. Yeah, absolutely true. All so, right. Hmm? Putting ahead. this in the context of the ones that give you a once per long rest is just ridiculous, isn't yeah. it? Absolutely. <laughs> mm, anyway. Next up. Yeah, that I mean that one feels like it should be more limited. But I mean it's limited by what it can hold. So its limitation is actually really interesting, right? Yeah. It changes the dynamics of the spell in a warlock feeling way. I love that. All right, cloak of flies. All right. So this is a bonus action magic aura that you put around yourself, the that grants you advantage on intimidation checks, disadvantage on all the charisma checks. Any creature that starts its turn in the area around you takes uh like a damage equal to your charisma modifier, and you can use it once per short rest. And the thing is, it doesn't have a duration, so you, as long as you don't dismiss it, you can just have these flies around you for all of the encounters. That's flavorfully S-tier. However, uh, practically... So, like, I, I could see this being something I would really want on specifically, like, a Blade Fiend lock, right? Someone that mm. is 
goal is to kind of get in the thick of it, take some damage. If I'm playing with Armor of Agathis, I probably want to be playing with Cloak of Flies. I think these things kind of go hand in hand, right? Because you are That's true, you're yeah. paid off for being inside of as many people as possible. I don't think it scales that well, which is kind of an issue for it. But I think when you get it, like you you get to fifth level, you for you drop one of your earlier invocations, you pick up Cloak of Flies and uh, Thirsting Blade immediately, and you're off the races with extra attack and a down area of effect plus three, plus four damage. I can see that playing pretty well. Um, I don't know. It's still not like the most riveting thing in the world. This is probably a fine little C tier invocation, maybe lower. But like C seems like it, it, at the end of the day, it's still going to be like two to three damage around. Perfect. I feel, That's I feel not good amazing. with C because um, the flavor sells me enough. That's fair. I feel like I was overselling myself to what it actually is. Like then I had a, I had the dawning realization it's three damage to like two creatures. That's not that powerful of an effect, right? Well, per round, right? That's uh, yeah. That's it'll add up and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe at, the, at minimum it's really interesting. I'm glad it exists. Yeah. All right, next up, Devil's Sight. So this like Devil's Sight is a build. And it's entirely based around being able to see the magical darkness, right? It let you put darkness on yourself and then you get an engine on your attack rolls. That's sort of the thing. Um, I'm not that high on the build, but I do think like it's a novel, neat little gimmick. I think this, where like Agonizing Blast is just always a consistent build. Book of Ancient Secrets is just always a consistent build. You can you can play different characters that are using those archetypes. I think Devil Sight's a little bit more narrow, but it's still powerful enough that they might justify being an A tier. Okay. Like, there's some cute build decisions to do with this, right? Yeah. I will say, like, this isn't something that generically any character wants. You do want to be abusing the asymmetry. You want to be making your own spheres of darkness. As long as you meet that prerequisite, I do think getting advantage on all your attacks is pretty yeah, solid. Yeah, otherwise it's nothing. Yeah, otherwise you do not want... I cannot emphasize enough. If you're not actively using darkness every single encounter, you don't want to be anywhere near this. Um, but in the character sheets that do do that, it is the critical element of your build that brings it all together. Yeah. Dreadful word. Right to F here. Confusion per... It's the Confusion version of the once per long rest <laughs> Warlock spell slot ones. Confusion is just, even worse than Compulsion. Yes, I like Confusion. But, um, no, not enough. And I mean, I, I recognize that it's not as powerful as I want it to be. But, yes, uh, once per long rest, using a Warlock slot, no thank you. A uh, fun little Confusion fact. Unlike the vast majority of spells in this game... This spell upcast to get an increased area, which is super novel. It's one of like three spells in the game that do that. Everything else, like you get more targets or it does more damage. Uh, confusion, bigger bubble, which is very rare. You got to call that out because it's like else to mention. It's just trash. <laughs> All right, Eldritch Mind. I like this thing a lot. I think it's probably another A tier. Eldritch Mind is something I think a lot of characters are going to take as they're like. You get to like 11th, 12th, 13th level. You just be like, yep, I now have advantage of all my con saves to maintain concentration on my powerful effects. It's I think it's pretty integral. I don't know about integral, but valuable on basically any warlock that can get it at some point. All right. Um, in, I don't think it's particularly interesting, but it is valuable. Like it's a real boon to play the class, I think. I forgot what it does. Advantage on con saves to maintain concentration. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, warlocks especially. You wanna you wanna maintain that concentration, keep your summons going. You don't get many. But if you like your shadow spawn staying up an extra two or three rounds to this thing, I think that's pretty valuable. All right. We, we, we've had Devil's Sight. <laughs> we will have Witch Sight. Now we've got Eldritch Sight. I think this, Remind this me one. What this does? It's Detective Magic, it will. Okay. I think it's somewhere right in between those two. The problem is, like, Detective Magic is really easily accessible in other ways. Like, we already have Book of Ancient Secrets in here as a top contender because it gives you access to it if you want it. And Detective Magic as a ritual spell is something like every single class with ritual casting gets. Which means, like, I don't know if I necessarily need to want to feel like I need to spend my invocation on this. That being said, yeah. if you're the only one in the party with it, it is still pretty fine. Mm, C tier? Let me ask you this. Um, does Detect Magic allow you to see invisible creatures? It lets you detect invisibility. You can detect the source of inv uh, an invisible spell. So if the duration you presence of magic, if you sense magic in this way, you use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. So you do need to, it doesn't need to be visible for you to see the invisible creature. Bomber. But you will detect if they're, from my understanding, you will still detect if there's an uh, illusion magic in your presence. Okay. That's not helpful. C? Fine. I think C's reasonable. I could be wrong okay. about that. Commenters, let me up if detect magic doesn't, in fact, do anything to help you detect invisible creatures. That really mellows the spell out for me. Also, go back and watch our uh, invisibility video. Oh, God. 
you'll see why I don't want to talk about this anymore. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> All right. Eldritch Smite. Okay, this is, I think, one of the most overtaken and worthless invocations you can get. Unless you convert spell slots into smites, but it's at a worse rate than paladins get, where it gives you a D8 force damage per level. So, like, paladins start at 2D8, so they get 1D8 more than you, and they have more spell slots than you, and they're just way better. All right, so if I'm... It also knocks things If I'm crumb, casting fifth-level spells, though, that's... Uh... 5d8 force damage for a fifth level spell. Right. You get two of yeah. those. Two yeah, of them. Yeah, that's not great. No, that's horrendous. That is not a good deal. Don't take that deal. No. Don't take Eldritch Smite. This thing is truly, truly trash. If you want to take one of your very few precious resources that you could desperately need to stretch over like long duration concentration effects, um, with like big summon effects, you 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 can't take that and just throw it in the trash for what is a worse version of the Paladin feature. It is not worth it. So are we talking D or F? I genuinely think this should be an F tier. I think this is bait that will make characters run out of gas almost immediately for using it. Because it costs you with an invocate. It's it's kind of like all of the other contenders here in F tier in that you're getting a new spell that is going to compete with your Warlock spell slots, which is just Divine Smite. So, like, you already have 12 other things that you've been leveling up and gaining access to that are spells, like spells known. You have no reason to ever put an extra one of those with an invocation from your uh, on your sheet. There's just no reason yeah. to do it. All right, uh, moving along. Eldritch Spear. This is 300 foot range Eldritch Blast. <laughs> I really think this is uh, some hot trash. Uh, I I'm not even going to put this online. 120 feet is good enough for me. It, it's plenty, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is ghoulish overkill. Is it so much so ghoulish overkill that no one will ever have a reason to use it? Should this yeah. be an F tier? I don't think so. I think this is D because you know what it is. You, if, you, if you're picking this, you know what you're getting and it does what it does. It's, I don't see. It's all right. All right. Let me word it another way. Okay. These F tiers, they're costing you an invocation and a spell slot. This is only costing you an invocation. You're only wasting one resource when you yes. use this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I guess we can stick it in D. I'm not sold it deserves here. I think it might. I think it honestly might be so, so insubstantial that it should be an F tier, but we'll put it here for now. If you're playing I mean, in wide if... maybe there are enough tables that are playing like big epic scape, like wide open adventuring space, like we're going through like uh, a dune setting or we're in some, you know, big where the ancients tread monster hunter kind of thing where you're fighting over 500 feet battle maps with giant colossal creatures. Maybe that world elder, this has some value. Or if you're at the top of a tall building and you just want to pick off people down on the ground. Bob, how many stories is 120 feet? I don't know. A lot is the answer to that question. Well, like I mean, we're living in a world plus, of right? magic, Sam, with with wizards making towers. Yeah, and, and how airships. Tall... Okay, airships. I'm a little bit more into. But that I can see the airship argument a little bit more. I might need to, uh, you know, spell sniper my eldritch spear. Yeah, you know, if I'm up in the airship. The only point of that is to get the theoretical how far can you shoot a missile. <laughs> That's the only point of that. Is you go spell sniper, you do the the sorcerer to increase the range of it. You're just like, what is the biggest number we can see using Eldritch Blast? That's what that serves the purpose of. Good times. <laughs> All right. Eyes of the Rune Keeper. I know a lot of people love conceptually this, but I cannot think of a more useless invocation. All it says is four, it, it's five little words. You can read all writing. Yeah, that's F, not enough right? for me. Yeah. Easiest F we've ever given? No. I you know, and, and I, I don't know. I don't think it's easier than these uh other ones. That, like I mean, again, you know what you're getting. It it does what it says on the tin. I think some people are going to value that. They're not the kind of people I will probably enjoy playing with, but yeah. I promise own. you, if you put Eyes of the Runekeeper on your sheet 
and you have a moment where your DM's like mysterious cryptic writing is on the walls. That mysterious cryptic writing is there for you to be allowed to use the feature and very likely isn't contributing to progressing the game anyway. So uh yeah, don't don't take this thing. It literally will not progress any game forward. If you want like I I would say comprehend language comes pretty close to doing what this does anyway. Uh, and that's a ritual spell you can get with the good old fashioned book of ancient secrets, memory serves. So I'm not super high on that either. Neither but am I. <laughs> I'd uh yeah, I'd rather talk with people than be able to read their foreign words. Yeah. Uh don't don't put this on your sh- it really is truly awful. Is there all right, does it work with like spell scrolls or something? You can read arcane writing and cast spells. That's nope. No. All right. You're still limited to your class for casting and reading spell scrolls and that kind of stuff. So ah, it's worth a shot. Nope. All no, thank right. you. <laughs> Far scry. This one is cool. I don't think it's very good. So this is the one where you you can write creatures' names in your book up to your proficiency bonus, and you can cast sending to them for free, which is pretty cool. So you can like telepathically communicate with people over large distances for free. It requires Book of Ancient or Pact of the Tome. Which is an invocation of our, our uh, pact boon I'm already pretty fine with. Like, it's the, I think that's the most middle of the road pact boon. It's still like sending I'm just not, doesn't matter that much. I'm not taking it for this. Yeah, I don't think I am either. The question is, like, does this have any value at an average table? I mean, it might now and again, but um, not enough for me to want to take it. Yeah. I mean, like, I think there will be some groups that are doing dungeon delvey stuff that are splitting up and communicating with long distance plans, and then the person that is got far scribe can like divvy out the whole divvy out people to different areas and like send the messages as they're receiving things. It's kind of like you're the 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 guy in the van where yeah. you're you know you got the surveillance monitors, you're checking to see guards come in, and you're like, all right, and go and go. I can see that maybe happening a few times campaign that I think keeps us in D tier. It's like, I think there could be some cool uses for it in real Dungeons the Dragons play. They're just going to be very infrequent, and I wouldn't expect this to do powerful things basically ever. No. All right, Fiendish Vigor. False Life at Will is a lot more interesting than False Life is. Yes. And it being something you can start out the gate with kind of gives those, like, the, the ones that take Cloak of Flies, those style of warlocks that want to play more of a martial life, I can see this being a real component to those sheets in the low tiers. It still just hit points though, right? Like it, it is kind of like you start every fight with an extra hit points and that's interesting at least. Yeah. It's not nothing. Yeah. B. Yeah, B sounds fine. Yeah, it's not nothing, but it's not everything either. Yeah. I think this is the kind of invocation you take in the early tiers you use for like three, four levels and then you bump it off your sheet at fifth, sixth, seventh level when you want to get some of the upper tier invocations in more, a higher density of them, I think. Yeah. Gaze of two minds. So this is That's, so uh, dumb. G A Z E, mind you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can use your actions after willing humanoid and receive through its senses. Uh, as long as it's in the same plane of existence as you, you can repeat that process, but you have to touch them to start it. Ah, uh, I've never, like, conceptually very interesting. E- another easy F tier, I think. I just don't realistically easy, think yeah. there's a practical use for this thing literally yet. It's, uh, I, I put it on the uh, same level as Far Scribe, but not enough to argue about it. It's a, a neat thing you can do, but clunkier than I want to do it. I mean, like, Scry at Will at least is kind of like an infinite ranged message, and I do think message has value in games. I'm not convinced having to touch the thing and then being allowed to see through its senses has any value at a table, especially in, like, a game setting where everyone is experiencing what everyone else is sensing together, right? Like, they're, metagaming is a real element of the game that happens whenever people get split up. Like, if the barbarian sees down the corridor a giant hawking monster and attacks it, like, everyone else is aware that that happened, even if they try and play it off like it didn't. I don't no. know. I don't think they're, like, the warlock's gonna gaze up two minds of the barbarian just to circumnavigate that problem. That doesn't seem Also, I mean, useful. this is what Fine Familiar is for. Oh, this Fine Familiar removes any need to ever consider this yeah. whatsoever. And that thing you could just do at will over any range. You don't have to touch the thing. Yeah. So that's enough to put it in F tier for me. I mean, if you if you want this effect, get Fine Familiar and you'll get so much more than this effect in addition to it. Oh, yeah. Pact of the Chain or Pact of the Toe both offer you a way to get access to that spell and it will be an integral part of your character's and, performance. Or just, just straight up Ritual Caster. 
That yeah. If you want pack the blade and a ritual or a familiar, absolutely ritual caster is an easy route to go. All right. Next up, ghostly gaze. This is a really cool invocation. Also, I don't think about it enough. G A Z E. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this lets you see through solid objects at a range of thirty feet, so it's X ray vision. Um, it lasts a minute at a time, and you get a short rest recharge on it. So you kind of like go, okay, for this next bit, I have X ray vision. Is that good? I, I mean, it? I think that's as much as you're going to need it, but I don't see why they didn't just give it to you at will. That. I kind of get why you don't get it at will. Like the idea is you want this is before ethereal this comes online to like circumnavigate dungeons. Like this yeah. is a full six levels earlier than that effect. Um I do think like the one use is really restraining. Like it, I think a lot of people are gonna put this in their sheet and have a really hard time deciding when it's appropriate to use it, or sometimes they'll use it and feel like they waste it. I think this could have had more uses and been still perfectly fine. Uh, that being said, like I, it is definitely a notable, interesting, and unique warlock ability. Like there aren't spells in the game that do this really, and yeah. for that purpose, I think this probably earns a B tier to me. Like this is a real utility invocation that you can bust out if it, you don't take like around seventh level is when I would expect to want start to want this kind of thing too. Mm. Like you already have your core combat invocations. You're like, what's some cool new utility things I can bring to the table? This seems fine. Sure. All right, moving forward, we have Gift of the Depths. I think this is a comfortable D, right? This is underwater breathing and a swim speed. Oh, and the once per long rest uh, water breathing, which is just the only amount of water breathing you'll ever need. Oh, so this is just straight up water breathing for yourself, and then, but you can actually cast the spell? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Basically, this says, I DM wants us to go into underwater campaigns. I'd like to be able to be the one that facilitates that. Yeah. We talked about water breathing, and we were like, oh, every class under the sun gets this. Artificer, Druids, Rager, Sorcerers, and Wizards all get it. It's also a ritual spell. So again, Book of Ancient Secrets, Ritual Caster, those are going to be repeating trends that we're going to be talking about. Um, all that gives you access to that, so I don't really place that much value in it. If your DM so, wants you to do underwater breathing or underwater combat stuff, you're probably going to have the tools for that other ways. But Yeah, as long as anybody has ritual casting, you everybody can breathe underwater. So I guess this depends on how much you value a swim speed. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't value it enough to probably put a single invocation to it on ninety five percent of character sheets. I had a I had a fathomless fathomless warlock which gets a uh, swim speed on its own. So you just don't need this on the one archetype that's sort of like aimed at that environment, right? Like it was a that's pirate true. campaign, and I played a fathomless warlock in the pirate campaign, and I got a real feature alongside my thing. So I had no need to ever even consider this. And I think most warlocks didn't find themselves in that position. So we're saying D. I think D's probably fair. Yeah. Gift of the Ever-Living Ones. I do not understand why people like this invocation. I <laughs> This is the one where when you regain hit points while you're familiar with 100 feet of you, you can determine any hit dice rolled as their max. Wait, what? Whenever you regain hit points while you're familiar with yeah. 100 feet of you, treat any dice rolled to determine how much hit points oh, you right, regain okay. as their max. I truly think this is an F unusable invocation. I think this is honestly a bait if your familiar goes down, which it will, this has no text. If you ever are in a situation where you're running out of hit dice to spend, this isn't the solution you're looking for. And most of the time, this just doesn't do anything anyway. Because like, regaining hit points isn't a way to proactively engage with the world in any meaningful fashion. I think this is horrific bait. I think False Life at Will does everything this does way better because it's proactive. Because you're getting that extra boundary of hit points every single time you use it and there's no waste ever. Uh, I really think this is truly, truly terrible. All right, that's uh, for the bait factor. I'll agree with you here. Um, oh, gift I'm of so... the protectors. I just look at that beautiful F here. Oh God, so many. Oh, it's, it's gonna get bigger. Oh yeah. So this is from Pack of the. This is a pre Pack of the Tome. A new page appears in your book of shadows. Uh, it's ninth level pre -act. Um, the creature can write its name in the game again. You can hold a number of those good proficiency bonus. And then whenever a creature that has its name in it is reduced to zero and not killed outright, you can cause it to drop to one instead, which prevents it from going unconscious, which is really cool, and dropping prone. Um, and then the same creature benefits once per long rest. So, like, this is a, basically a bunch of death wards stabled to a ninth level feature. And, like, if we compare this again to the last feature, Gift of the Ever-Living Ones, I rate this so much higher because it will impact combat the moment it happens, but it's still only going to impact combats where people are going down. 
And like, there's cheaper ways to get Death Ward a will in Warlock, believe it or not, with Undead and Undying both getting Death Ward as spells, but because it has such a weird duration, you can just cheese your rests so you can like give it to the whole party with an extra two hours. Mm. Uh, I don't know, D? D? I was thinking C. I think that uh, I think it has more value than that. For running people right now, does have a fair amount of value. Okay. All right, sure. I I can be swayed to C. I don't think it's great. I think if you ever put in your well, sheet, if you're at like a table where people are regularly going under, I can see it being like, okay, yeah, it's pretty solid here. That's what C is. Not great. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Grasp of Hadar. So this is like, there's there's, there's a push and a pull one. This is the pull one, yeah. but it's only once per turn, which is the difference between it and Repelling Blast. So like once on each turn, when you hit with an Eldritch Blast, you can move it 10 feet closer to you. Uh, yeah. It's part of the yo-yo gimmick. Is it good? No. Right? <laughs> it's it's uh, cute. I mean, I think the yo-yo gimmick can work out occasionally. Uh, but yeah, I don't like that it's only once per turn. And this is one of the Eldritch Blast modifiers that I'm least interested in taking because I like to keep things away from me as much as possible. I think like if you're gonna take this, you don't take this. You don't. If you're gonna do the move thing, you're not doing the pull thing. You're doing more of the push thing. So I think this probably is a comfortable D. Like I think even on the builds that are doing the full Eldritch Blaster, this is probably like bottom of your priority list. Like this is something you take only after like 13 levels and you've got stone, nothing else to take. Then it's like okay, sometimes I'll pull someone 10 feet into. By that point, you've long left spike growth. But like I don't know, maybe you get someone into a blade barrier once in that game, and it's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, D sounds just about right. All right. Um, improved packed weapon. So this is a heinous thing that has to exist. It's plus one magic weapon to your packed weapon if you don't already have a magic weapon. Uh, and then otherwise it just lets you use bows, and it, you can use your packed weapon as a spellcasting focus. So like, I don't ever want to have to need this, and I don't think most blades ever want to have to need this. So I think this is another comfortable D, where it's just like. It it's a magic weapon sometimes a plus one it's like magic weapon for your packed weapon until you get a real magic weapon and it just stops being a feature outside of you can use it for your spell casting focus but again then I think those characters are offering a one warcaster do you take this instead of warcaster maybe eh? C or D I, if, what it speaks to you uh I like D because I I mean I feel like at some point I'm going to get a magic weapon and I don't like that this doesn't further improve it. Yeah, you definitely want rid of this the moment you actually get a magic weapon. So I don't think the spellcasting focus is nearly enough text. No. Uh, do you sound good to you? That sounds great. Yeah, let's just stick it in D with the rest of them. <laughs> the ever-growing list of D's and F's. <laughs> I swear I like the Warlock class. I swear. All right. Next we have Investment of the Chainmaster. I think this one's sweet. I think this is a comfortable A. Like, it's not yeah. game-defining. It's not, like, unbelievably powerful. It's not adding that. Like, it's not taking your familiar from busted tier to even more new levels of busted. But it is a genuinely big little big improvement you can get for your familiars. So it gives them a speed of 40 in flight, which is something they usually already have. Um, you can bonus action command them to attack, which lets a lot of the cool, interesting stuff with sprites start to have happen, where you can, like, start picking things off. Because also... Uh, the familiar uses your save DC instead of its save DC for your abilities, so you can like scale it up so your familiar or your sprites can like drop things unconscious as a bonus action, which seems pretty spicy. Uh, and then you can also give it resistance to damage, which is kind of novel to like keep it alive from one extra hit, which is pretty neat, especially in the low tiers. I think this thing's genuine. I've seen this play used a lot recently, and it's mm -hmm. been great every single time I've seen it used. Like it's the primary method in which our fiend lock engages with the gate is through this feat or invocation. So I I really do think it's awesome. Yeah, I agree. It's um. Yeah, just all the little uh, added conditions your your familiar's attacks can do. That's oh. good times. Oh, yeah. All right. Following that, we have Lance of Lethargy. Yeah, this is the same problem as Grasp of Hadar, where it's once on each of your turns. So, like, you're firing off four or eight Eldritch Blasts, and you're getting one instance of a ten-foot slow. Yeah, that's that's not where I, that's not what I, I value. I... Yeah, I mean, we're going to come to Repelling Blast soon, which I love. 
but that lets you hit with every blast. Yeah. This, yeah. I do think this would be a fun character name. Lance of Lethargy? <laughs> yeah, he could just be really tired and lazy all the time. That is genuinely really funny. That's a great gimmick. I love that. Uh, he's still, I think, like, he's not unusable, but it's still probably around Grasp of Hadar D. Like, I don't think most characters' sheets, even ones that are doing Elder's Blast, want this. And I I like this kind of effect, but I'm going to agree with you because, uh, yeah, once per turn, I feel like I'm not getting as much value as I as I want. Ah, okay, hold on. I think I've talked myself up to see in my brain. <laughs> Just, so just like I'm thinking about Ray of Frost and how if you ever eat an action with that, you're really happy. And the issues that tend to be Ray of Frost's main issue is you don't often want to cast it. So like Elder's Blast is something you do actively want to cast. So I do think the instances that it'll eat actions to force dashes is slightly higher than Ray of Actually, Frost. Uh, I think considerably higher now that you mention it because yeah. uh, the range. Yeah, the extra foot range also really helps you with that. So I think this is probably going to be C tier. All right. Let's yeah, see. I'll, I'll right. try to be fair to these things and not just hate on them because they're stupid. When uh, when you're looking at it side by side to grasp a Fadar, yeah, the, it felt wrong, it, right? Yeah. It did not feel like it belonged next to that invocation. Okay, life drinker. Twelfth level. This is like your third attack ish because it gives you an extra charisma mod on hit to your weapon attacks. So like you go from doing two attacks with regular mods to two attacks with an extra plus five to each hit. Assuming you have a plus five charisma. Um, I do think like the blade locks do eventually want this. I think those builds probably do value it enough that it's a solid B. I don't think it's something that you're like thirsting over, but it mm -hmm. is something that you'll get and be like, oh, this is a meaningful improvement to my damage. This is great time to pick this up. I'm scaling better into the upper tiers because my two attacks do an extra 10 damage around, right? Like that's fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up we have maddening hex. So this thing is you bonus action to create a psychic disturbance around a creature cursed by your hex or a warlock feature like your hexblades curse or sign of element, which will get a sign of element, but that's not a real use case. So it's literally just hex or your hexblades curse, and then or uh, bestow curse. I guess that one also technically counts, but also it's one of those trash invocations. So after you've used a bonus action to set up your hex, you can use this, and then when you deal, whenever you do, you do psychic damage to the target and each creature within five feet of it equal to your charisma modifier. And you have to be within 30 feet of it. And like all this is just too many hoops. It's too many hoops to jump through, Bob. I don't I don't want to have to spend three consecutive bonus actions for this to start doing anything. Or two consecutive bonus actions and other things for this to start doing anything. I don't think I want Maddening Hex on almost every character I'm ever playing. It still almost. does something. Yes. <laughs> That's where I was going with it. Um, is this D? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you're going to have a hard time spending your bonus actions in the mid-tiers, right? No, probably not. Like, if you're doing hex things, you want to move it around as you're shooting things down with your Eldritch Blasts. So, like, you're going to keep moving it with your bonus action. You're never going to have the bonus action up to Maddening Hex. So you have it up infrequently. If this is, like, a once-per-encounter bonus three damage or five damage to things in an area, I'm not that high on it. No. An invocation I am uh, high on, though. Mask yeah, of Many Faces. What? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, Nothing. Right. I just said segues. <laughs> it's fine. This is great. I think this is a solid A tier. I like it a lot. The Sky Self at Will is really cool. This is the changeling ability. Um, but you just get it as an invocation. Yeah, this it's... this feels like all right, I'm a new character now. I have a superpower. Yes. We're like the I think this invocation is one of those ones that does stand up next to first level spell slots where you're like, okay, you can catch a disguise self once. I can just do it whenever I want. And you get, a, obviously, a more flexibility that comes with having more first-level spell slots and stuff like that. But the real, there is a real major benefit to, I don't have slots, but I do have as many masks as many face, or as many disguise slots as I want. I think this is, like, a really great example of a, I think you can use a lot more flexibly, try more things with it. You have a lot less risk associated with it because you're not spending any resources. I like this a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if, this is one of, the, one of the good ones that are at will. And also, no concentration, so there's really no reason to never, to, uh, there's no reason to not have it up. You don't have to worry about your concentration concentration effects to use it. You can just do it as willy dilly. It's great. Well, I mean, you might not want to look like somebody else. That's fair. Maybe just you're comfortable in yeah. your own skin. Yeah. Okay. You, I mean, you are a charisma character there. So that's true. All right, master of myriad forms. So this comes fourteen whole levels later, unless you cast alter self at will. 
That's <laughs> all right. So essentially the same thing, except you can get away with more if you're making contact with people. But like you and can't change you your can clothes. Grow gills. All right. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, you can grow gills, and you can have bad weapon attacks if you'd like. Your autumn strikes can upgrade to a d6. Yeah. <laughs> what level are we getting this? Fifteen, baby. Well, my d6 on arm strikes are very valuable now. Should we put this in F tier? Is it? It is an at will spell, but it's horrendous. Well, I no, I think D, because if for whatever reason you value this more than that, you're not going to take both. You can. You'll but you take. Can, there's 14 more levels worth of characters that can take Mask yes. of Any Forms, though, right? That's true. <laughs> Do any 15th level plus characters exist that get excited about this at this point? No. I don't think so. But but is it F? Yes. All right. Yeah. I think this is F. Yeah. You get most of what you need from this from Mask of Many Faces. Yeah. Uh, and if you need... Alter self for some reason, you can get, take three levels in sorcerer and get enough uses of it. You can get, take three levels in wizard and get enough uses of it, or druid, or whatever else. And warlocks often do that. Long anyway, right? before you get it here. Oh yeah, you can do that like eighth level. All right, next up we have minions of chaos. I think this might be the only one of these that gets to escape after you're into D tier, just because contra elemental is really busted. Oh, is this the uh, uh, once per long rest using a spell slot? Yeah. Okay. Ah, but I, I, in the world oh. with Shadow Spawn, you don't ever take this, right? I guess, like, the Elementalists might, right? If you wanted to be a Genie Warlock and you wanted an Earth Elemental Servant or something... Maybe? Maybe? Is that a compelling enough reason to take this out of D tier? It does last an hour for concentration. It's almost good enough to learn this spell that I think it might merit some niche characters to consider it all right all right it's still awful here. but like yeah i don't think it quite i think if what this is the one that comes closest to justifying its cost all right well we need some more f tier room anyway probably no oh, great so another we have one that actually does go into f tier which is mire the mind this is slow for the same product you can cast it once and you can't again until you finish a long rest and you, Using you, a you straight spell. up don't like slow i like slow but i'm with you here yeah. Uh, uh, don't worry. I'm going to put other spells I do like in here. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't hate slow either. It's just mid. It's fine. People way overrate that spell. That's where I, I stand slow. on slow. Okay. Uh, next up, Misty Visions. I think this deserves an S. I love Misty Visions. This thing's so this, good. What is at will? Uh, Silent Silent image. image. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Silent images are huge. They're 15 foot cubes. You can animate them. You can use them as like to disguise terrain. If you like playing with illusions and are good at playing with illusions, my God, is this a house of a feature? I have historically not been good at it, but I've been uh, I've been working on it and uh, doing some fun things. Yeah, you can do wily e. coyote like tunnels and cliff sides or. <laughs> And it can, the best part is that can actually come to fruition, right? I can really envision moments where, like, you create a faux tunnel. Like, there's, like, a ten, like a, a stone wall, right? And you can put 15-foot cube, so you cover half of it with stone, like, and then, you like, a sliding rock, and then you have the other animated, like, hole where the other one is. And then they run directly into the rock, and you escape through the tunnel. Like, that's so yeah. fun. That's so cute and clever. They, I love that. Drive their horses straight into it. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> you just really like horse abuse is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it is a running theme in your books. Yes. I um I will say this, the constant uh let's put it in A tier just because concentration does really hamper this in the upper tiers. Like mm. low tier, I really do think this is game warping. The moment you reach like third to through fifth level though, I do think you're like, oh, I can't use my Misty Visions because I have a Shadow Spawn, because I have a Summoned Fae, because I have some other concentration effect up for an hour that I don't want to have break. So like, that is a real hamstring on this thing. It's still a really, really good, powerful invocation that I want on almost every character I get. Yeah. Okay, we have one with Shadows. This is what I do want to put an S tier. I love this thing. Well, not S tier. I what, like uh, it a what lot. This, what does this do? You, while you're in dim light or darkness, you can use an action to become invisible until you move or take an action or reaction. 
So if you're in ever in dim light or darkness, you can just become invisible. Yes. And then you can do that at will, but if you ever move, it breaks the invisibility. It's really neat. I like, I, I S tier conceptually. Powerful, probably less so, right? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, th that feels like some hoops to to try and get it to be practical. But it's also at will? So, like, there, you can yeah. always oh, yeah, do yeah. it. And there's dim light or darkness relatively frequently in this game, right? Like, anytime you're dungeon delving, if you hear someone coming, you just be like, I'm gone. You guys figure out what to do. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah. See? I don't know if it's S tier. Hmm? Uh, maybe B. Maybe this gets maybe out of C tier down. into B tier. I agree that it doesn't deserve S tier. I was maybe I, I just I think it's such a cool ability. Oh, it's a unique yeah, way from Warlocks doing the invisibility thing. I like that a lot. I know what it's like to get excited about features that uh aren't don't really warrant it. Yeah. Okay. Like this next one, Otherworldly Leap. I like this one Other a lot world... too. <laughs> Otherworldly Leap. Yeah, this is a jump at will, uh, which you would expect because other first level at wills had no level prereq. This wouldn't either. And I think if this had no prereq level, I would think it's super cool. For some if, unholy reason, they gave it prereq ninth level. Also, if uh, jump rules were better. Also that. Uh, I think both those things combined put this into a comfortable D tier. B? Ninth level really is pushing on, like, I never want this on any character sheet. Did you say B or D? D. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's novel. Um, it's yeah, cute. I agree. I'm, I'd like to like it, but uh, I mean, you've you got things like... Um... What's the other one? Uh, levitate at will. That, that literally the same level. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Oofa doofa. All right. Uh, next, protection of the talisman. This is another talisman one, but it like saves matter more than ability checks, and this gives you D four bonuses to failed saving throws, basically, to whoever's wearing the talisman. Yeah. I have a hard time giving this thing above a D. Like, it... Maybe C is more fair. It's still not a really compelling reason to play Talisman, but it is a free bonus D4 for the most important roles you're probably making in the upper tiers. This still isn't, like, a compelling reason to play Talisman. No, but this, it's not. If you but found if you are playing talisman, talisman for whatever reason, then uh, I think this is reasonable. It's, uh... Yeah, I mean... Saving throws, you... You know, more, more often, maybe more often than not, know when they're likely to come up, and uh, you can plan for them. Not really. And, yeah. <laughs> like you have, to, you have to stick this on your sheet and just say, "I will be making saves," and that's true. You will be making saves, but it's just like bland, Here, I guess. Going against a a dragon, and uh, well, this guy's susceptible to fire. <laughs> I'll give him Here, the talisman. Here, wear this. I'm convinced, like, if you're a talisman warlock, if you don't have the teleporty one, you just always wear it yourself. Like, there's almost mm. no reason to give it to other people, I don't think. Well, I mean, I do like that flexibility. You can if you want to. If... I just think realities, you don't ever want to. But yeah, probably Maybe. Not. You, I guess it's like you give it to the rogue for their solo mission and just pray it works out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they're checking for traps. Exactly. Whenever you, you you cast fine traps and they go, okay, there are traps <laughs> present. And the barbarian goes, don't worry, I have trap sense. So while I can't sense them, I have advantage on my deck saves against them. So I'm just going to plow right into it. And then you slap a talisman on him and you don't even worry about looking for them. You just use a bunch of features that are good against traps to stumble right into it anyway. Perfect. See? Yeah, see, seems fine. Haha. <laughs> ah, oh, rebuke of the talisman. Your favorite joke Wait for it. ever told. <laughs> Bad talisman. Such a dumb joke. <laughs> uh, oh, so this that's is... why people come to the channel. That's fair. That's an excellent point. Uh, it is your... You are a connoisseur of bad jokes. It's quite incredible. Uh, they're so bad they're good, in fact. So this is just like a... Or do psychic damage whenever you take damage and proficiency bonus and also shoves things 10 feet away from you? Or whoever is wearing the talisman I uh, again this feels like a really lukewarm amount of damage for an invocation it's like two times when you get it at third level and then it goes up to three times per short rest at fifth level oh no this doesn't have 
This doesn't have a limitation of uses. You can just always use this. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking this had a limitation of uses. You can just always, if someone damages yours wearing the talisman, you can reaction to push them 10 feet and they take your proficiency bonus bonus damage. So it's like two damage every round to whoever is being attacked with the talisman. Is this the best reason to play talisman? I don't know. Maybe. This, uh, you know, it's got the uh, the movement thing that I like, but you don't really get to control it. So it's not like you're not pushing somebody into a blade barrier with this unless you're just hanging out next to blade barriers. Yeah. I mean, this might have the real tax rate, but like because you're using it every single round, this just becomes your new reaction. That has to be at least somewhat meaningful, right? This is a new reaction you always have access to. Yeah. And I would expect that you would be able to do this round after round, especially if you're like a blade talisman. Or you can't be a blade talisman. God, this is so rough. Yes, that's the other thing. Eating your, your uh, pack boot is so rough. Now, this is only against melee attacks? It, the attacker has to be within 30 feet of you. Oh, all right. Within 30 feet. All right, that makes it a little bit better. Yes. Uh, but not, not much. I, I, I think want this to is like the. It. The th reason to play Talisman into low tiers is not even that good of a reason. So I think this is a C. C? All right. Come on. There we go. Relentless Hex is something I've done a full 180 on. And it's purely because... It's purely for using it in ways that it very... It seems to me very clearly not intended to be used. This is the one oh. where it, you, if you've hexed something, you can teleport to it. Um... As a bonus action to a hex sorry. or a... Sorry, uh, my alphabetizing was wonky again. Okay, sorry. Relentless hex, go on. Yeah, that's the one. So, like, this is the one where we really just slagged on it the whole video when we did this invocation. And then we got a bunch of comments that were like, what if you hex your familiar? And that makes this thing so much cooler. Yeah. It's we do read the comments. We do. So leave some. Yeah. Uh... This is the one that I think most convinced me to come up because that is a really novel niche ability that's super fun and it only has the prereq of hex. So if you're already doing the hex thing, basically you do hex for an encounter. At the end of the encounter, you move it to your familiar and then you have this thing at will, which is neat. Worst case scenario, you shoot your familiar so you can keep moving your hex around in the next encounter, which is still kind of interesting, right? Like there's a lot of cool, unique play patterns that feel really warlock to me. Uh, that being said, like this is still just like a neat little teleport ability i don't know i still don't think i'm ever using this as intended right i don't think i'm ever using this to like bridge gaps and chase people down no but um i mean it has that yeah I mean, you don't need to use it for what it was intended for you uh use this fun thing agreed it is still and kind it's of not, expensive it's not but... like you have to jump through a lot of hoops to go through nonsense you don't want anyway I mean, yeah, you need a familiar, but you want a familiar. True. There's two easy ways to get it, like we've talked about already. Yeah. Uh, B? Um, B feels really generous because you still have to yeah. spend your... You still have to hex something, right? Like, it still also requires you spend a spell slot for this to do anything. I think C is probably more fair. C feel, feels fair enough. All right. Here's one that I know you adore. Yes. Repelling Blast. This has no limitation to use, which is the most interesting part about it. So, like, if you're quickening Eldritch Blasts and you're firing off six to eight around, you can just shove people all over the place. Yes. Which is kind of neat. a bunch of people a little bit, or you can shove one guy like halfway across the world. I, like, I love to envision a cinematic moment where, like, an orc is raging and, like, leaves down on top of you with your axe and you just blast him in the chest eight times and you just launch his, like, his space program. <laughs> <laughs> that seems really sweet. Uh, more practically, there is, I, I can't deny that there is, like, if there's a push that is going to be good, it's going to be the one that you can abuse using multiple times, right? And yeah. this can stall out one slower creature almost indefinite, almost indefinitely in the Elder Blast builds, right? Mm -hmm. That is um, novel. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, keeping people away from you is like the floor. I mean, I value it as much for uh you know being able to push them into hazards uh you get that's where get yourself a, a phantom steed you're you know you can swing around really quickly get in position push mm -hmm. them exactly the direction you want them to go 
It's a very cool little play pattern. It's still like it's only in combat. It's only when you're eldritch blasting. So it is still somewhat narrow. It's just on all the blaster characters. The still is like a solid enough effect that I think it might deserve a B. Like there, I think even outside of really dedicated blasters, I could still see some compelling argument for a twenty to thirty foot shove around in the upper tiers is gonna be fine. And this is like an invocation you take midway down the game if you really want to. I think early this really is awful. Like one ten foot shove around is not it pre fifth level. But once you get two to four, once you're doing the Eldritch Blast quickened stuff, I think it becomes a lot more interesting and gets a lot better there. Yeah, um, this, I mean, that's the only reason I wouldn't value it in the beginning more than Agonizing Blast, but later on, I'm a lot more excited about it. Um, I definitely think it's a lot more exciting later on. I think B does sound fair to you, though, right? This isn't quite A tier. Uh, I was thinking S, but okay. <laughs> definitely not that. Okay, um, I will bend to your will. Just. Sculptor of Flesh. Yeah, I said I was going to talk about a spell that I do think is very good that still isn't worth it and goes right into F tier. This is the one. Sculptor of Flesh. Uh, once per long rest, Polymorph is sure not worth a Warlock spell slot. Now, which, uh, but, all right, which and one invocation was the one that was? Uh, call, yeah, Minions of Chaos is the one that gives you Conjure Elemental. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that being more valuable. Yeah, just like having a an hour long buddy is a lot more relevant, I think, than this effect that you can find numerous duplicates for within the warlock class, right? Like this is just a saber die. You can find saber dies in warlock that aren't requiring you to take sculptor of flesh. If you're playing out of a PHB, minions of chaos is novel in that, like it is, and even compared to the summon stuff, you're getting an elemental that is going to have a lot more durability, a lot not necessarily more damage, but close to more. Like some of them will be higher damage. They're going to do different and more impactful things than some of the other summons will, which is why I think it's a consideration. This is just a saber die. There's really no other reason to contextualize it outside of that. You can find those using your regular warlock learned spells. You should have no business putting an invocation for this on your sheet, I don't think. Yeah. I Does agree. even outcast. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Shroud of Shadow. So, this is like the actual invisibility at will. This is 15th level prereq, though, for invisibility at will. A steep. Uh, the one thing I will say for it, though, is that you know by the time you're at 15th level, you probably got all the other stuff you want. I really being wish invisible. they would waive the concentration for it. What's that? It not being able to, like, it requiring concentration is a really big downside at the 15th level, though, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's invisibility. It's, uh... I don't know. I feel... You're, you're not going to feel like it's uh you're not you're not using it you're gonna use it yeah i i guess my my point is that i'm putting this next to one with the shadows which is the one where you can become invisible if you don't move mm -hmm. i don't think these are that far apart in power and this is a whole lot like 10 levels extra of prereqs which doesn't sound like a really good deal to me i think this probably should be lower prereq levels before it become online that being said it's still invisibility at will it's still pretty novel i don't know if it's like powerful at this point so i think c tier seems fine all right good that's where i was gonna go all right sign oh. of ill omen contender for worship vocation in the game <laughs> this is bestow curse using warlock spell slot now why would you want that you wouldn't you have to touch a thing that sounds awful it's no. very flavorfully fitting, but it is sure booty. Yeah. Anything else to say about it? It's bestow it, curse. It's, it's another one of those once per long rest invocations that you have to spend a warlock spell slot on, and there's just there's no room for that kind of garbage. And bestow curse isn't all that great. Bestow curse is I rate one of the worst third level spells in the game. Like it's the curse examples they give require you touch, require concentration, and none of them are like more debilitating than part of a giant AoE saber die like fear or hypnotic pattern. They come nowhere close to being good enough for just how many hoops you have to jump through to get the effect. All right, agreed. Thief of five fates. Another contender for worst invocation. Uh, this is Bane using warlock spell does. slot. What is this? Bane. Bane. All right, you're you're worse on Bane than I am, but uh, no, not for a spell slot. Not for a spell slot and an invocation. No, thanks. No. Uh, hot F tier. Garbage. Complete trash. Yeah. Better than Bestow Curse on a technical level, because at least it up, but at least it's upcast matters more. But it's yeah. still not something I don't think you should ever, ever do. 
this I think could be at will, and I'd still be like, yeah, it's just Bane. How good is that? Ah, if it was at will, uh, it definitely goes up a couple notches for me. Oh, but um, it gets out of F tier for sure. It becomes interesting yeah. at will, and it's sure not at will. No. All right. Um, next up, we have Thirsting Blade. Uh, this is extra attack. This goes right to S tier. This is the reason to play Blade. It is just a really, really crucial build defining component of low tier warlocks into mid tier warlocks. You need extra. So, this is how you get it. It's a tax you have to pay, but it is a worthy tax to pay. All right. We have uh, three S tiers so far Agonizing Blast, kind of generic. We have the uh, Tome, um, Look at me into secrets. Defining feature, and the Blade defining feature. Do we have. All right, no, we've gone through all the uh, talisman talismans. Ones. There, there's no talisman defining S tier feature. What's the other one? Uh, chain. The chain. And... Uh, chain is. I. I think we have an A tier. The the voice of the chain master, or the one that it gives not voice. Which one well, is that's it? Coming Investment later. of the chain Investment. master. That's the one. Yeah. And I, right. I think it, I do think there is a note like when you pick chain, you don't need to take any of their invocations for it to already be excellent. Yeah. You do have to take Thirsting Blade for Pack the Blade to do anything at all, but it does turn it, it, your character just becomes a martial character when you do that. You pay a single invocation tax to be put in the same category as Paladins, as Rangers, as Fighters, as all those other classes, and get a giant scaling bone boon, which and is our, a second attack. It's just really critical. And our our best talisman features are both C-ranked. <laughs> <Feels generous. laughs> all right. They're just so boring, man. Yeah. Uh, moving along, we have Tomb of Levestus. I remember this being a really interesting video. Yeah. Um, remind me, this is you, you, you encase yourself in ice mm -hmm. when what happens? You gain a bunch of temporary hit points, 10 per your warlock level. So, like, yeah. I, it requires pre fifth level. So, at minimum, you're getting 50 temporary hit points as a reaction whenever you would take damage. The thing is, you immediately are incapacitated for a full round, which means you're going to skip your next turn. So, like, this is a once per short rest giant block of hit points that has an enormous cost. Well, unless the fight's almost over and you really need to not die. I would hope someone had access to a single use of healing word over this, right? <laughs> That's true. Like, I don't, I would rather try and help end that fight or Misty step out or do any other number of escape tools than this, right? That said, it is pretty cool. It's deeply interesting as well. I like the design yeah. space a lot. I think that can keep it into D tier. It's not unusable. It has a neat decision. It's a really cool oh shit button. I like oh shit yeah. button features sometimes. I don't want more than like one of them on my character sheet. This is not a good version of that, but it is, again, really interesting. So, you know. Yeah. I think a revised version of this could be very, very fun to play with. It's, uh, it's not Thief of Five Fates. <laughs> Correct. Nor is it Trickster's Escape. Ah, trick, uh, Trickster's Escape. This is I, what, freedom movement? Yep. Or once using a Warlock spell slot, once per long rest. Ah, it really kills it. I, I'm a little bit higher on freedom of movement than you are, but... Uh, yeah, I'm convinced that spell's also trash. Not for this cost. No. No, thank you. All right, and like if, if you want to hear our conversations on these, we have covered most of these spells and we'll be covering the others uh, in the future. So go back and look through the videos. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving forward with Undying Servitude. I really wish they eroded all of the F tiers we talked about to just have this text instead. Because it's really simple. It says you can cast Anime Dead without using a spell slot. Once you do so, you can again until you finish a long rest. This is just one free use of Anime Dead for a level yeah. for your deck. That's great. I like this thing a lot. Um, it is kind of hard to use, believe it or not, because like you... you you have to wiggle your way in a fashion that you animate a zombie, you long rest, you animate another zombie, you barricade them in somewhere where they're not going to kill you, you long rest reassert control over both of them if you want to use both of them. Like, there are going to be some little logistical hiccups that this thing has that stops it from being truly, truly awesome. Um, it's still, again, neat, though. And it doesn't let you, like, do the abusive stuff where you could use your short rest spell slots to, like, just take eight long or eight short rests in a row or animate a small army. I don't know. Uh, solid. I mean, animated is a really powerful spell, but, like, the hiccups are really big here. 
Also, this is uh, you're limited in the because uh, uh, of upcast, right? Is that am I uh, thinking of something different? So, because it, I think because it specifies without using a spell slot, I believe it will always default to its lowest level, right? This doesn't okay. use your warlock spell slots at all. This lets you cast anime oh, right, dead. Right, right. So, this is always getting cast as a third level slot, which means okay. it does cap out at four undead under your control. Yeah. That means having 400 under control is a really big boon. Sure. Especially for a fifth level character. It, it's either B or C tier. I don't I don't know which. Let's take a look at what we got here. I'm definitely putting it below repelling blast. C tier it is. All right. All right. Next we have visions of distant realms. Arcane eye at will. For a fifth oh, level will. prerequisite. Um Arcane Eye. That's you create an invisible magic. So many eye. of these things that do the same thing. I get them mixed up. You make an eye somewhere, and you can send it around as an action, and you can see through that eye. All right. So, an extremely limited familiar. Yeah, it has the boon of being invisible, but so do all the pack of the chain familiars. So, and like... it can just keep going on forever, right? I mean, this doesn't have a time limit, does it? Uh, it's concentration up to an hour, and then you have to oh, recast never it. Mind. And concentration also is like a huge hiccup with this thing. I comfortable D tier to me. Is it D? Yeah, there's just too many other really easy, like, information gathering tools that exist that really diminish any need to conceive, conceivably even try it. Yes. All right. Next, voice of the chain master. This is the one I'm lowest on for chain. It lets you communicate over any distance, and you can perceive through their senses over any distance. And you can talk through, you can use your voice to talk through them, right? So you can be like the rat Jeremy, or more the weasel Ron Weasley Jeremy, can like talk using your man voice. <laughs> is that good? Not really. Uh, it's fun. Yeah, it. The I think the increased range is like the bulk of the text here. I don't place a lot of value on that. No, yeah, we. I remember talking about this, and uh, I was trying to justify my hype for it, but then, uh, I don't know, I kind of petered out. You want a D or C? Eh, D? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not going to fight for it much. I really don't think most characters want this on their sheet. I think most people will find it to be wildly excessive. All right. Next, we have Whispers of the Grave. Speak with that at will. Ninth level prereq. Really cool. Yeah. Good? I mean, yeah. Yeah, this is Dungeons and Dragons. There's going to be no shortage of dead. That's true. And you can talk to all of them. Like every yeah. single one of them. And that's really neat. No concentration. Doesn't normally have the ritual tag. And I, nor I don't often want to spend third level spells on this kind of effect. But if I just have it at will, it becomes suddenly a lot more interesting. Yeah, that's true. I want to put this in b tier i think b? i like it a lot i think most characters can put on their sheet and have be perfectly fine with it but it's not something i want on every character right that's why i think it's staying out of a tier for me all right i was thinking more c middle of the road but uh yeah that's fine every single corpse you could talk about imagine the number of people you will mock oh. with this ability yeah <laughs> remember remember the, the joke you made recently um with phantom row we were talking about the uh trivia uh, tokens and you would you would bring someone back to life just to ask them how's your head asshole this is that ad nauseum well no but that uh, the only reason i want to do that be is because i'm the guy that killed him yeah and you can be the guy that kills them all too and then talk to the bald whispers of the grave that's true yeah that's true all right uh, b tier okay I think it's super super cool at redefining this spell as an invocation yeah, this is something you, you can take and then that can be, all right, I'm the guy that does this now. Yeah. It like it really does feel a lot more like a power than a spell at this point. Right. Like uh, like I said about Mask of Many Faces. Yes, that, exactly. Yeah. All right. And the last one, we have Witch Sight. Uh, I think this is... So 15th level for... You can see the true form of shape changers or objects concealed by illusions. Mm. Oh, I want to put this in D tier. I don't D? think right. D any character should want me. this. It does do something. Yeah. Oh, it's so niche. Wow, we uh, we really filled out D tier. We got two lines in F two. Let's go. There aren't a lot of amazing invocations. Not a ringing endorsement for Warlock. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is enlightening here. Yeah, like 
looking at all of these invocations and just figuring out how many of them are kind of trash. <laughs> I don't know. It's fu- it's fun. At the same time, I will say like I think with C and above, you can probably put them on your sheet and they will do enough that you'll be doing the warlock thing the way you want, right? Yeah. I I I, and really try I mean and... there are a lot of them there. It's true. Like more than half. Ish. It's close. Yeah, <laughs> there are three lines close. in C tier. Uh, yeah, dangerously close. Actually, I guess the more about half of them are not ones you should take. But like, I still think if you take an S tier one, so you have like agonizing blast or thirsting blade on your sheet, or book of ancient secrets, if you're doing like the big utility package thing, mm-hmm. I think you can get a lot of extra stuff going, and then a couple of one A, a couple Bs, and a couple Cs. And you're you got the recipe for a character that won't have a shortage of things to do, which solves a lot of Warlock's core problems. The big issue that you're going to see with the Ds and the Fs is they just don't give you nearly enough to do. Like all of the once per long rest invocations that are in F tier, you gotta, you can't get anything to do. You don't have Warlock spell slots. You don't have invocations to cover for that. So you're just left there as a character that's like, you do I do? <laughs> the ever everyone above that though, I think like again, C's plus is really where it looks. Like, you'll have ways to engage with the game. You'll have contributing new elements to bring to the table. You will be a functioning member of the party, I think, with these kinds of uh, diff, like, powerful options at your disposal. You know, I wish there were one or two more that had, like, good at will spell effects. Mm-hmm. That, um, yeah, that, that would have made a big difference for me. But yeah. with what we've got, uh, Mask of Any Faces, um, What's the other one? There's Misty Visions. Beast Misty, Speech. Misty Visions. Even Beast like Fiendish Speech, Figure. Speech. Um, no, that's not... Ah, the Speak with Dead one. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, uh, Whispers that's... of the Grave. There's also like One of the Shadows is kind of like Invisibility at Will at a relatively cheap rate, right? Like a lot that's of these true. you do get early. You'll note that like most of the Bs, As, and Ss come at 5th level or earlier. So like... But I mean, that you'll... can... Uh, that can be... A reason to take at least a level or two of warlock. Oh, the the, the reason I love the class from multi-classing so much is this S through B category. I will gladly take two of these in three levels of warlock. Right, like mm-hmm. you're gonna have two invocations at third level plus your boon plus your subclass plus two second level pack magic. You can then go do kind of whatever else you want, and you'll have robust features like just agonizing blast gives you a scaling character for the rest of the game, where you're getting multi attack, you're getting extra attack with your charisma modifier that's gonna be scaling very well into the late game. That's just an excellent thing, a really easy way to do it. And then you can kind of just do whatever you want. Take levels in Rogue, take levels in Bard, take levels in Sorcerer. It's really great for dipping. All right. Well, uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with me this long. This has been a a hell of a video. Uh, And thank you, viewers, for uh, staying here with us if if you have for this long. Um, As always, we'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think Mm -hmm. of uh, our rankings and, uh, you know, any opinions you'd like to share? We'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear like, we... which yeah. one you think should move the most, right? So, like, if That's, you think yeah. uh, we're way overrating Book of Ancient Secrets, it should be an E tier, or like, no, Dreadful Word is actually really good for some reason. It should be an S tier. Like, I'd love to hear those ones the most. Ones that you think we're most wildly off about. All right. Well, that was our our. I think that is the official end of Warlock Wednesday, at least for its current incarnation. Um, thank you everyone. Uh, like subscribe and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.